now we need to start from there so how we might be uh, forgot right that to refresh your mind a little bit we start with uh, when a fluid element will have rotation when a flow will call only translation uh, that we try to show you by uh, a orientation or movement of a fluid element in the left side like translational flow fluid element is not rotating about the mass center but in the right side fluid element is moving from one point to another point and while it is moving it also rotating uh, around the mass center and sometimes you see in the river you see there is a vortex and that vortex is not in same place is vortex also moving with the stream of water if you look in the rainy season in the river or in a canal okay then uh, we try to explain you what is laminar flow and turbulent flow then main difference in laminar and turbulent flow in laminar flow there is no transfer of momentum from one fluid particle between the fluid particle but in the turbulent flow there is a transfer of momentum between the fluid element then uh, we should try to show you how you can visualize a flow pattern by simulation and also by doing experiment in the wind tunnel and if you put some smoke uh, you can see how flow of the fluid over a object and you can see all the streamline of the fluid then what is the streamline and what is the condition of streamline if there is a velocity and there is a streamline equation then which equation it will be satisfied that we try to explain you this is the vector that means distance travel by a fluid element from point a to b one point to other point this this point to this point moving along this direction and if velocity of the fluid element is this one then how you can figure out that what condition it will be satisfied it will satisfy this condition okay then uh, we learn some definition that what is steam tube it is a imaginary tube uh, for fluid flow where all the streamline is passing from one end to other end of the streamline and there will be no intersection of the streamline that <coughs> and also velocity of the fluid there should not be any flow perpendicular to the streamline that is the main uh, characteristics of stream tube now this one will start from here it's called path line what is the path line path line mean uh, the path followed by a fluid element or fluid particle or actual path travel by individual fluid particle over a certain time so it's saying a path line may be defined as a actual path travel by an individual fluid particle over some period of time time of period or period of time okay uh, see at one second fluid particle is right over here after two seconds that means one plus delta t is coming along this path right over here and at time t2 coming over here so this will be a path line and a path line can intersect each other 
you see this fluid element passing along this line and this fluid element passing over this line. Now, you might have the question that when a fluid element coming over here and other one coming, is there is any collision? If there is any collision, then <coughs> fluid path or path line of these two fluid elements will be changed, but there is no collision. Why? Because they are traveling not at the same velocity. So this fluid element might be cross this line, came in over here, then this fluid element cross his path. Okay. Although their path is intersecting each other, but there is no transfer of momentum. Right over here, a fluid element might come back or passing through the same point several times. Uh, this fluid element coming, he crossing this line, again he's coming right over here, then going to the downstream. Okay. So two uh, path line can intersect uh, each other or a single path line can form a loop as different particle or even same particle can arrive at the same point at different instant of time. For example, fluid particle from here, he, at a time he came in over here. Then he crossed this point again after a few seconds, he again come back over here. Some case, it might be make a loop again, May, might be uh, making a loop, not following the same path, but might be in this one, then he traveling along this way. So uh, you just need to understand what is the path, path line, the path uh, is, uh, it is a, uh, trace of line followed by a fluid particle or path travel by a fluid particle over some period of time. Then other thing is streak line. What is the streak line? You see uh, sometime your younger brother might be they play with the bubble water bubble and soap so you see the uh, fluid particle or if it's a bubble uh, you release eight bubble but all the bubble like this is uh, bubble one what was his initial uh, position his initial position was right over here then he came in over here, gradually he follow point six, five, seven, then came in over here. Second bubble, that means this one. He also follow the same path. It's not like that, that the first bubble following this path and second bubble coming along this path now. So it's saying a uh, streak line is the locus of the temporary location of all particle that have passed through a fixed point in the flow field at any instant of time. So how do you see over, over here that all the fluid element they are passing through a fixed point. Uh, that is the main definition or you can say it is a line traced by a fluid particle passing through a fixed point in the uh, flow field. Okay. And easily, um, you can easily observe, say you make a, there is a wall, say right over here, vertical wall. You have a window or door in the balcony you play with the water bubble and release the bubble. You might observe the all the bubble, some until some time they are passing through the same point, going through the same point. That is called streak line. Then uh, timeline. What is the timeline? 
timeline is a set of adjacent fluid particle adjacent fluid particle mean say i have a group of fluid particle and after time t how they travel along the uh, stream so this particle his velocity almost zero because he is close to the wall same thing for this one but if you consider the fluid particle from the wall little bit away from the wall this fluid particle travel this much distance this one travel this much this one travel this much so how did you see the they all of the fluid element along the adjacent fluid element they take the same amount of time but they don't travel same distance so at a time t1 this is their distance travel by the fluid element so if you connect this line then this line is called timeline this is timeline over time t1 say two second what is the timeline after five second that will be like this one he will travel might be this much this one might be this much so <laughs> excuse me or might be this one is this much so if you connect all the line then this line is called timeline okay so what is the definition timeline is a set of adjacent fluid particle that are marked at the same instant in time timeline are particularly useful in situation where uniformity of a flow to be examined we like to check whether there is uniform flow or not then you need to check the timeline that you can you have a for example glass tube and the fluid flow along this direction so if you are put some dye if you put some color in the fluid right over here then you just you sitting over here then you counting the a fluid particle came in over here within 2 second where it is going so he might came right over here this one might be came right over here or this one might be came over here this one might be so what you see over here their velocity is not uniform but if they are travel almost by the same distance by the same amount of time you can say your flow is uniform so that mean this region flow is uniform but this region flow is not uniform so you can figure out that where flow is uniform and where is non uniform okay Uh, over here just i try to show you the difference sometime i put question that what is the difference between stream line streak line and path line okay so path line is a flow path of individual fluid particle with time exposed flow that mean you have to consider the time not the velocity but you have to consider the time then within 5 second or within 2 second the fluid particle how they are traveling uh, in the fluid in the or in the stream and you make that line that that is called path line and streak line it's saying instantaneous snapshot of a time integrated flow pattern that mean after you release immediately you have to look that how they are flowing in the stream and following a fixed point all the 
fluid element that is called strict line <laughs> streamline are instantaneous picture of the flow field that mean based on the time what is the definition of the streamline that every point you make a tangent that tangent will give you the direction of the uh, fluid particle say you have a streamline like that so a fluid particle coming from here he coming over here so along the east line if you make tangent of here this will give you direction of the velocity so everywhere every point fluid element is changing the direction of velocity as per i draw it over here right so over here this is steam line and it's a path line and streak line are flow pattern that have a time history but steam line there's no time history but it has a time history because every time is giving the velocity right velocity also related to the time so path line and streak line are flow pattern have a time history associated with them so just remember the differences and sometime i put this question in the exam i see everyone just write down the definition instead of giving the difference okay okay <clears throat> um, what is the fluid mechanics we will apply some law of engineering mechanics to a to the fluid right so in engineering mechanics you will have uh, three law right like uh, principle of conservation of mass that you cannot create or destroy mass this is one uh, principle and we will use this principle and we will derive a equation based on this principle that equation is called continuity equation other one principle of conservation of energy that means energy neither be created or destroyed on the basis of the principle i uh, will derive energy equation in the fluid uh, might be not okay because it's a little bit uh, bigger but we will show you how we can derive and what is the final equation energy equation of fluid principle of conservation of momentum or impulse of momentum this one okay so impulse of the resultant force or product of force and time increment during which it act it equal to the change of momentum of the fluid and on the basis of this principle we will derive momentum equation what is that equation uh, if you know the newton second law that f equal to ma and this one we can write down a equal to dv by dt and this dv we can say uh, v2 minus v1 divided by time dt and from here you see we can write down that f into or only you say uh, into dt equal to m into v2 minus v1 so what is v2 what is this portion right hand side right hand side is actually the change of momentum and from this change of momentum <coughs> we will figure out that if a fluid uh, passing through a pipeline then if he change the direction then what will happen he fluid element change the direction or flow so 
change the direction of the velocity that means this this v is changing in terms of direction and magnitude then there will be some force i need to figure out how much force will be there for example you working dhaka city corporation as a mechanical engineer you design a water line and they're making this way so right over here change of momentum will be high right here will be high and if there is any 90 degree turn of the pipeline then here will be also high change of momentum so in this area due to change of momentum the fluid will impose some force on the pipe and you need to make sure that support of the pipeline has to carry that force okay so <clears throat> and we'll derive that equation we'll show you if there is a sense of momentum of the fluid how we'll get a force uh, this is the uh, continuation of taylor series that we will use throughout the fluid mechanics that you have a rho at a certain point how can figure out the density at a distance dx x by 2 from that point dx by 2 in that case this will be the density similarly if you like to figure out the velocity by using taylor series we can figure out okay same thing we are showing over here okay so right over here uh, you already know that uh, conservation of uh, mass equation that mean uh, mass entering in a control volume say a water tank and water is coming from the by the pump from the ground floor then water is leaving through the pipe coming to the east floor of the house. Now, how much mass increasing inside the water tank? How can figure out? You can figure out mass entering per unit time, right? That mass in minus mass leaving per unit time. Mass leaving per unit time, uh, what is called normally? We call it m dot. That means said expressed by m dot mass per time. That means mass flow rate. So we can say m in and mass getting out. We can say m dot m out. That means this mass mass is getting out from the control volume. And this mass mass remain coming inside the control volume. So how much mass increasing? So you can just figure out m in minus m out, right? So m in minus m out will give you increase of mass in the control volume for any time. And if it's steady flow, steady flow mean mass flow is not changing respect to time then what will be happen? Inside the control volume, there will be no change of mass. Same amount mass entering in the control volume, that will be get out in the same amount of mass will be also get out from the control volume. That means your water tank will not be fill up, right? Though you are entering, uh, pu uh, pushing some water by the pump because you releasing two liter per second or 5 kg per second, same amount of water getting out from the water tank. And definition, you know, the matter cannot be created or destroyed, but you can sense in different form of matter. This principle is known as conservation of mass. Okay, and also uh, sometime we need to use this uh, principle to derive the energy equation and also continuity equation. 
So let's derive the continuity equation for two dimensional flow. Say there is a pipeline and fluid entering at section A1 and leaving through section two. So in the section two area A2, the velocity of the fluid U2 rho rho two. That means is compressible. You see, rho is not the same. Right over here, one density at the section two, there is a other density. Now we are saying that mass cannot be created or cannot be destroyed. And since there is no storage, right? So water entering in the pipeline at section one, and same amount of water. Uh, has to leave through point two. And what are entering over here in section one? How much? M dot. M dot in, this will be M dot out, right? So in that case, we can say that M dot in equal to M dot out, right? Or we can say, m dot one m dot mass flow rate at point one will be equal to same at mass flow rate at point two because mass is not living through the boundary so same amount of mass has to leave the system now how will you figure out the mass flow rate you see we know the velocity of the fluid element. Velocity of the fluid element at section 1, E1. And area, let's say A1. Or if you think the small section, area del A1 and velocity E1. And I already, I think I show you that if you multiply the area into velocity of the fluid, then what, what will you get? You will get Q. That means volume of water flowing per unit time. You say area, unit of area, meter square, right? Meter square. Unit of velocity, meter per second. So finally, you are getting meter Q per second that is is called volume flow rate or sometimes it is called only flow rate that is we express by q okay now what will be unit of q meter cube per second but i need m1 so if meter cube per second that means q if you multiply by rho then what you are getting Q is the uh, meter Q per second. Then you times by density, rho is the density. Kg per meter Q. Then you see meter Q, meter Q will be cancel out. So you will have unit Q equal to Kg per second. That means area into velocity into density you will get the mass flow rate so right over here you are getting uh, rho one into del a one or you can say only a one u one equal to rho two a two u two equal to mass flow rate and that is constant in that case so this is steady flow. That's why mass entering this point, this point is the same. But if is not the steady flow, that means flow rate is changing respect to time, right over here and right over here, then some mass will be remain over here. But we are thinking for a steady flow. So in that steady flow, you are getting this one. Now, if uh, density is constant, in that case, row one and row two will be the same. 
so then you are getting only this equation a1 e1 equal to a2 e2 equal to q so this is called continuity equation for two dimensional one dimensional flow flow going on one direction and fluid is not uh, compressible okay that means incompressible and this one sometime we write down this way that uh, one second we write down like q equal to area at section one multiply by velocity at section one will be area two and velocity at area uh, location two and this equal to constant so what happened if you know the velocity at point one if you know the area and the other point you know the area they need to know the velocity how you can figure out directly you can figure out if you know the area because v2 equal to a1 v1 divided by v2 from here i can write down v2 equal to a1 v1 divided by a2 okay this is Any any question? Hello. No, sir. No. Okay. Uh, now we will derive a equation uh, that is also continuity equation, but for compressible flow. Compressible flow mean anyone know what is compressible flow? The rho is not constant. That means rho sending point fluid flow from one point to other point that is called compressible flow and in compressible flow fluid density is constant so if i think a fluid element uh, say a rectangular fluid element i am considering or a control volume So, if I choose this control volume and at the center of this control volume, fluid element has a density. So, I am saying this is the center, there will be density. And if I draw the axis, then this is vertical axis, horizontal axis, this is third axis. So, fluid element will have three components of velocity U, V, W. And density at the center is rho. And this fluid element has some dimension dx, dy, dz. What will be the mass? We can figure out easily, right? We figure out the volume. Volume will be dx dy dz multiply with the rho you get the mass right so if velocity of fluid element at the center of the control volume is this one then you see rho when right over here is not the same as center also right over here so i'm thinking the some fluid entering along x-axis and leaving out from the control volume. Similarly, some fluid entering from the bottom along, say, from the top, from z-axis and leaving through the bottom. Similarly, along other axis. Okay, now, at the center along x-axis, what is the velocity of the fluid, u? So at the center, I have velocity u and density of the fluid rho. So what will be velocity right over here? Is not the same u because 
it also changing. Similarly, right of error is not the same as this point. It is also changing. But how I can figure out the velocity at this point? Again, by Taylor series. In that case, my A will be how much? This much distance, right? Dx by two. So from here, I can figure out the velocity and density of fluid at inlet and also at outlet. And we know the outlet area. We multiply dy by dz, you get the area. So area, you know the area, you know the velocity along x-axis. So I'm saying x, then you multiply by the density, then what are you getting actually? A, V, rho. That means you are getting uh, mass. Rho, A, U. That means density, area, and velocity, you will get the mass flow rate. Okay? Then mass in minus mass out. What will you get? Mass remain inside the control volume. And we will do this along all the axis, like along particle axis, right over here, what is the velocity of the fluid particle, V. And that velocity at the top, at the bottom, is not the same, they are changing. Also, uh, rho. So, rho is changing respect to y direction, and along x axis, rho is changing respect to x axis. And we will figure out what is the mass deposited inside the Control volume due to the flow from y axis. Then all the mass, net mass from x axis, y axis, z axis will sum together. Then we'll figure out the rate of change of mass inside the control volume. Then you derive the continuity equation. Okay. So let's derive that equation. Uh, before that, you have to write some assumption. Okay, consider an infinite symbol control volume of dimension dx, dy, dz. Density of the fluid at the center of the control volume is rho, and velocity of the fluid v. V is the vector, Your, it has a three component. And we'll assume ideal fluid, that means no viscosity, and fluid is incompressible. This is two assumption. So let's uh, we can derive this before we start derive. Any question so far? No. Okay. Uh, let's say one thing that uh, some time I see attendance is extremely low, but don't forget it is completely ten mark. And in the last semester, in my class, I think about 10 or 12 only got A plus. And I see some people got like 76, 77, but three mark has not able to increase because they, are, they don't have any attendance. Like from out of 10, they got two or three mark on the attendance. So uh, request your friend to attend in the class and from the next week i might take attendance by calling you after 10 minutes or 15 minutes because i see that some student they that joined in the class just before 10 minutes 15 minutes the what does it mean they just joined in the class to get the attendance but they're not uh, staying in the classroom okay So uh, if uh, I call you, but still you are not response, that means you are not in your screen, then you will not get that lens, okay? Okay, uh, now let's uh, derive that continuity equation, okay? Let one second. Okay. 
okay uh, did you see the equation and uh, mathcat file yes sir okay so let's see how we can derive uh, let's say derivation of continuity equation for uh, compressible flow consider an in finite symbol control volume with psi length dx dy dz density of the fluid at the center of the control volume o o is the center of control volume right there density is rho and velocity of the fluid particle vector v that's why i, I just bold it okay and this is the uh, velocity vector so right over here along x axis some mass entering in the control volume and mass getting out and what will be the mass deposited inside the control volume you can say m in minus m out right and right over here i just you know show try to show you that if you multiply q into rho how will you get the m dot that's showing at the unit and m dot is called mass flow rate unit kg per meter second okay now density of the fluid is not constant it varies based on space and time what is the space with respect to distance x y and z so density of the fluid left hand and right side of the cube is not the same right over here and right over is not same so we need to uh, figure out the density at left side and right side why because i need to figure out m dot and how will get the m dot equal to rho into q and what is the q area into v i know this area y dz into yz and i'm sorry y this will be area if i know the u that means velocity and the density then i can figure out the m dot Okay, that's the intention. So right over here, I was trying to show you by a Taylor series. This is my Taylor series. So at the center, density is rho. Right over here is rho. So what will be density at distance uh, dx by 2? So just fx will be rho and this is you put dx so you put this one then we are getting this equation this one and this higher order term dx by 2 dx is very small term you divide by 2 then you are squaring more getting smaller so we can neglect for simplification again that means we are missing some accuracy how we can justify by experiment so now your density of the fluid element at the right side right over here x plus dx by 2 why dx by 2 because uh, distance from the center of the fluid element and right this right is this mass so this distance how much actually this distance is dx by 2 positive right but what about the distance from left is center to left is that will be this mass right that means minus dx by 2 you need to travel negative x-axis so left side of the fluid this is my density right i'm sorry this is right side positive left side this mass so we have the 
density already got it right now we need to figure out the velocity of the fluid at this two point how we'll get the velocity it says similarly velocity component u at the right and left side of the control volume so at the right side will be this one here instead of rho you just put u because you looking the how uh, u is uh, changing okay then this one is uh, u at left side the distance is dx by 2 but this is minus that's why you put minus over here then I need to figure out m dot in and how much mass entering right over here. So if you like to figure out m dot in, okay. So what I need? I need velocity at the left side. This is my velocity, left side. Uh, this one density at the left side density right over here we figure out into area left side area dy into dz this area similarly now this value what is this value this equal to this mass and this equal to uh, rho we just figure out over here rho equal to this mass so you just put over here. Then you just multiply, take out the uh, bracket. So u into rho and u into this term, right over u and this, this, this term remain the same. Then by this term, so this term into rho. So this term into rho, minus minus plus then you are getting this term multiply by this term multiply by this term at what dy by dz okay now dx square so we can neglect this term higher order term and right over here you multiply by dy dz so you are getting rho u dy dz then right over here, just the rearrange like u and d rho. I keep in a bracket half. This is volume dx dy dz. Similarly, uh, this one is neglected, right? You just rearrange this one half rho d by dx. You have this term. Okay, now. If you look carefully, that uh, this half I can take it out from this two term dx dy I put in a bracket. So inside u rho del rho by del x and rho del u by del x. So if you look this term, this term equal to actually del by del x del rho. Uh, could you hold on one second, please?
Hello. Okay. Uh, are you able to listen me? Yes, sir. Okay. So we are just uh, right here. We like to figure out that how much uh, mass is uh, entering through uh, x axis at the left side. So after the arrays, we are getting this term. If you look carefully, this term, this term actually derivative of rho u by del by del x rho u or derivative of uv. So like this is u, then del v by del x, then it is v del v by del x, right? Instead of v, we have rho. So this term, we can write down del by del x rho del rho. Okay, sir? Okay, now, uh, so this is m dot in. Similarly, we need to figure out the m dot out. That how much mass is getting out from the right side, this m out. Similarly, m out will be equal to density into velocity into area. So you see, this is my velocity. This is density and this is the area. Similarly, you put all this value. This value equal to this one, we already figure out. And density, right side, this mass, and this is the area. So similarly, you multiply and rearrange, then you will get just this term. This is your m dot, and this is our m dot in. So if we take the subtract of these two, we can figure out that how much mass remain inside due to the velocity component u. So m dot x net, uh, in the exam, you will write down like that, m dot x. In the, this program, I am not able to write dot at the top. That's why I did uh, last like m dot over here. Then you say m dot x net. This equal to how much? You write down this. You write down m dot x in. That I, way I write down over here. Okay. So you subtract these two values m dot x in, m dot x out. So this is the in, this is the out. We already figured out uh, the show you, right? Then you rearrange this equation. Then you see this term will be cancel out. This, this is cancel out. So you will have m dot net this term and this term, okay? So if you look carefully, this is, if I say half x, this is half x, what will get full x? This equal to minus del by del x by this component, okay? Similarly, along, uh, y axis along y axis you are getting this one or similarly for m dot y net we need to figure out so m dot y net will be give you if you follow the same procedure Instead of u, you're getting v. So this is my 
m dot net for the velocity component v similarly you can figure out m dot z net that means along this direction this will be this term now what will be the change of mass inside the control volume change of mass equal to del m by del t right so del m by del t then what will be the m volume into density so this is the volume and this is the density volume is not changing respect to time only density is changing so this one i can write down del rho del t into volume now what do you see this is this mass mass increase or decrease inside the control volume so if i make summation or m dot net along x axis y axis z axis that will be equal to this term okay so you see m dot net along x axis y axis plus z axis equal to m dot sense now this one we already figure out minus this term that means mass deposited into the control volume due to the velocity component u this one due to the velocity component v and this one due to the velocity component z equal to rate of change of mass right over here now you see dv is everywhere i can take it out so finally you are getting this equation del by del x uh, rho u del by del y rho v del by del z rho w del rho by del t equal to zero this equation is called continuity equation for compressible flow three-dimensional flow in rectangular coordinate and similarly you can figure out for cylindrical coordinate or spherical coordinate okay and this equation you can apply for steady unsteady uniform non-uniform compressible and also for incompressible flow uh, if you think that fluid density is constant that means incompressible so in that case this component will be zero if you say fluid is steady flow what does it mean nothing changing respect to time that means this will be del rho by del t will be zero if you say flow is two dimensional what does it mean there is no w w is zero uh, if it is one dimensional that means two velocity component will be zero so this equation we can use for both compressible steady and incompressible flow now this equation some book they represent in other way uh, you see you spend a lot of time to learn the mathematics what is the application right over here you know divergent see right over here they sometimes called deep v this one i write down over here deep divergent and this is the v if you make dot product these two vector this one and this one rho v equal you will get this term at first in this v you multiply by rho rho is not the vector right that's fixed multiply with the rho a constant for example so it will be rho u uh, rho v j rho w k now this vector this one div and the rho v you make the 
dot product then you get this one now we see left side of this term i can replace by this one so equation one that means this equation i can write down with this way uh, at first we rearrange this equation Uh, write this one okay we rearrange it then uh, we got d rho v del rho by dt okay uh, so far any any question hello in the derivation no question Anyone? No, sir. No question. No. Okay. Uh, so uh, we'll show you that how you can use this equation for steady, then incompressible flow, also for one-dimensional or two-dimensional flow. So let's see where I left it right over here. So this is the derivation. Okay. So if I put this derivation in the exam, make sure you start from the uh, assumption. Okay. Now I'd like to show you something else that this continuity equation, how we can use for different case of flow so this is my continuity equation and this is a time derivative changing respect to time so for steady flow nothing changing with respect to time so this term will be zero then here continuity equation coming this one if you like to express in simplified form then you can say divergent of rho v equal to zero. This one is called divergent. For incompressible flow, again, you have uh, no sense of density, right? So this equation, this will be zero. Then this rho is constant, right? E rho take out the outside. Then uh, what I am saying that right over here, if I take this line again, writing over here, since rho is the constant, I like to take that rho out of the a common and this term is already zero so i can delete this term now i miss the row right so this row Will be this one okay now if you want you can take out this bracket from with the velocity component so ultimately what will happen this row this term row cannot be zero so this term equal to zero that's a write down quantification become this one and if incompressible and you say flow is two dimensional then what will happen w equal to zero then in that case your this value is coming zero okay 
and you see for incompressible flow rho is not changing again rho is not changing along x axis along y axis along z axis even uh, rho u if you this term you can uh, break in two terms like this one rho into del u by del x plus u into del rho by del x then what will happen rho is not changing respect to x axis so this will be zero so only if you have only this term <coughs> <coughs> So this is the continuity equation and for one dimensional flow, obviously this two will be zero. So if you have only this term. For one dimensional incompressible flow, no change of density. So you have only this term. And what, what is getting ultimately? Rho you taken outside, rho cannot be zero then you are getting del u by del x equal to zero. That means velocity is not changing with respect to x axis. So this is just to form, I might say, derive the continuity equation, then uh, what will be the form of continuity equation for incompressible steady, incompressible flow. Then you just to show that what will be the equation, okay? No question, any question? If you have question, let me know, okay? Now, uh, this continuity equation we derive in, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Cartesian coordinate, right? That means only x, y, and z coordinate. But this continuity equation also can be derived for a spherical coordinate system. Uh, for example, you like to figure out the continuity equation, or you are in space, NASA Space Center, and you are studying the air flow around the outer periphery of the world. So how are we going to study? This is a earth is round. And from space, also you see the round, right? So if this is earth, there you need to study the about two miles above the earth, the atmosphere. You counting that, what is the air velocity? How it is look like? then you need to use the spherical coordinate. That is the spherical coordinate. You see, I think this is, I, this is a math class, but still I put it. Uh, in spherical coordinate, coordinate will be r theta phi. What is the r? The radius, also theta vary in the bottom, x and y in, in plane axis. And this phi, is the angle between vertical axis. So if this around the sphere, r theta phi will vary. r is zero, you are getting at the center of the earth. r is right over here, you are just top surface of the earth where we live. But if you um, increase the r, you will be in the atmosphere of the earth. Right, and for different location, you can change the, this angle rho and phi. Okay, and right hand side is called cylindrical coordinate. Say you have a pipe flow, you like to um, study a flow of air inside a tube or inside a pipeline or submarine inside a aircraft body. I look like, like a aircraft body is not perfectly cylindrical, but somehow you can simplify as a cylindrical body. Then like boiler, you like to study 
the water flow inside the boiler or flow of steam then you need to use the rectangle um, cylindrical coordinate in that case your coordinate will be r phi then z okay so don't be scared i just refresh you and i like to show you what will be the form of continuity equation in the in these two coordinate uh, normally we derive i derive this two equation but uh, here we will not derive i will just give you the continuity equation in cylindrical coordinate so this is the form of continuity equation in cylindrical coordinate okay in spherical coordinate we don't have the i don't give you the equation okay and this one we could derive but it will be a uh, little bit uh, in-depth analysis so I, I skip it so in the exam i might say derive the continuity equation for compressible flow and uh, deduce the equation for steady two dimensional flow then i might or i might say write the quantification in cylindrical coordinate okay. so uh, this uh, chapter is uh, finished okay now we will start new chapter Did you see the see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, don't be scared. It's easy. Okay. But one thing is share here. Both share. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I will have three more week, right? Including yes, this sir. this week. So I am not sure that I able to finish. Normally, I need three extra class to finish the uh, chapter in the syllabus in my part. So in that case, last two week, uh, you have two option. You can give three extra class or you can have class both together. So I don't have to repeat. Instead, I can move forward. Uh, in that case, you guys need to decide. You need to talk is that then you need to decide. Okay. Okay, sir. And let me know by next uh, class, or you can email me. Okay. Uh, this chapter is little bit. Uh, like we have previous uh, uh, lecture sheet, we derive the quantum equation, equation, how it look like. Seems like even in a math class, not in the fluid mechanics class, right? But fluid mechanics is highly uh, mathematical term is used. If you in the do masters or PhD in fluid dynamics, you know, then most of the time you have to uh, use the differential equation you have to use different boundary condition then you solve it then you look that solution of the differential equation is right how we can know you can then do the simulation in the ANSYS I think I already told you uh, before that uh, in uh, fluid dynamics class i took on class in when i did masters in uta there was a uh, one teacher he was showing the uh, differential equation and in the that he was showing say you are he, he was teaching us combustion but what is the nuclear bomb is kind of combustion of uranium right you drop it 
due to the impact it start combustion and it explode so in that case he was showing that uh, derived the burn, uh, differential equation to figure out if you a bomb from a certain distance then at first it will be a, like a mushroom there will be height of the mushroom there will be radius right over here and how long take time to have 20 feet steam height from here 20 feet how much time needed to have a diameter of five meters or two miles then what will be the radius of this portion and how the flame will travel around the peripheral direction what will be the speed what will be the temperature right over here right over here and right over here. everything you can derive with uh, differential equation the fluid mechanics so what i'm saying that you should not be scared this is the scope you see you learn math in inter intermediate in e school also in the when you are studying engineering on your first year secondary you might say why are learning math what is the apl application so here is the application that you have already seen in the previous slide right in to derive uh, continuity equation so similarly uh, right over here we will derive some uh, equation by using differential equation also in using the math okay so right over here i just trying to show you that a fluid element at time t right this point then after time delta t he deformed like that so actually what happened if you try to visualize or try to understand you see at first uh, in i am saying that this fluid element he was if think this corner he traveled this corner travel from this point to this point he came in over here so what does it mean just translation then you see orientation is not the same then he make a rotation you see this line go up this line this line moving upward right and this line move along this direction y axis like right? it was vertical right but he wrote it so <coughs> then he wrote it to match with this orientation and after rotation he has some angular deformation so you see right over here he wrote it but there is no angular deformation because the all the side still vertical but right over here he has angular deformation after angular deformation then there is a linear deformation that means he one side become bigger than the other side but length increase so finally he become this shape okay so a fluid element when a fluid particle is travel in the fluid stream then there might be rotation there might be translation there might be angular deformation and also might be linear deformation if there is only linear deformation then there will be no vortex there will be no curve but if there is angular deformation then there will be some uh, vortex for example if you burn mosquito coil then you see smoke coming out in one stage you will see smoke is you know making a vortex S similarly if you look carefully somebody is smoking then fluid coming out smoke from the cigarette at that point it is rotating so you need to figure out mathematically when there will be rotation when there will be no rotation okay that we will try to figure out and this slide i already put again i already discussed it 
to refresh your mind, but we are not will not discuss it again. Okay, now <coughs> so three type of motion will have in the fluid. Number one, rotational. There will be rotation, and this is called pure or irrotational translation when there is no rotation, only translate a fluid element from one point to another point. And this one is rotation. And what is this one? Angular deformation. This one. And this one, if I consider a fluid element, this is the initial position. And after time del t, he might come back to this shape. That means there is a angular deformation in the fluid element. Okay. Now, you need to figure out why some cases fluid element traveling from, I'm saying from this point to this point and shape is changing. What is the reason? The reason is that this point O traveling with the same velocity, certain velocity along x-axis, along y-axis. So along y-axis, velocity of the fluid at point uh, O, say U, but velocity, I'm sorry, so y-axis velocity V, but point A, how many velocity he has? Two component, U, and v so his v is not same as this v so i am saying his v is v a so in vertical direction point a travel faster than point o that's why he you see this is my point o this is my point a so point A move faster along vertical direction. But how do you know if fluid element del x velocity is V over here, what will velocity at point A? Easily you can figure out by Taylor series. Then you multiply by time, then you can figure out this distance, the how much he traveling faster, okay? So let's see, we'll derive one thing. Okay, so there is uh, rotation or rotational translation, pure distortion, or they are it's called also angular deformation of the fluid. So we'll check it that when there will be translation. What is the condition for translation? What is the condition for angular deformation? You see, if there is a angular deformation, what does it mean? That means there will be a vortex. So mathematically, uh, you can prove that uh, there will be vortex and there will be no vortex. You can mathematically prove, okay? Uh, this one just, uh, this one more, point I added over here. This is called shear deformation. This is elongation. This is, is called dilatation. That mean you see this like dilatation kind of a drop or the rain drop dropping coming through the air. It hit the ground, then what will happen? It expand, right? is volume no more spherical shape. That is called also dilatation. That means a fluid element initially at a time t is q. Then still he is q, but his volume is increasing gradually, okay? And how the bubble burst? In uh, you see bubble, soap bubble. It has the pressure inside then it has a pressure outside, right? When both pressure is same, it will not burst. Any reason, inside pressure, outside pressure is different. 
then it is bust because his skin is a kind of film, little film, right? So uh, you can also figure out by uh, differential equation in the fluid dynamics that how a bubble coming at a certain speed through the air and when it will be passed and how its shape will be sense, okay? But we'll not study that, uh, I should not scare you. And we'll derive some equation. It's called linear translation. When there will be linear translation and linear deformation of fluid element. That will check it, okay? So we have the time, right? Oh, almost a little bit time we have, okay. One second, I think we can finish it. Okay, uh, we'll try to show you that mathematical relationship or equation that when there will be a linear translation, when there will be vertex in the fluid flow, that will try to uh, show you, okay? So a fluid element is a black one, O is the left corner, and it has four rays, right? And this fluid element has a velocity at point O, U, V, W. And it is moved from point O to O prime, but with time, small time dt, but shape is not changing, okay? So if U component, velocity along x-axis is U, then how much will be this distance, this distance. Obviously, will be u into delta t, right? Because x velocity divided by time, you will get the distance. Similarly, how we can figure out the distance travel along y-axis by point O. So y axis velocity is V, V into delta T, okay? There is no only linear translation. There is no deformation. But sometime you might see fluid element is like that, but he came in over here, then he's deformed like that. On length getting bigger. That we need to figure out a differential equation in uh, that, what will be the condition if there is a linear translation or linear deformation of the fluid element. So you see right over here in the, a fluid element at a time t is right over here. His dimension O, A, C, B. But after certain time, what is the time difference? Delta T. T plus delta T time, it travel from here to here. Become O, B, A prime, C prime. A prime, C prime is the new position of line AC. That because he get bigger, this much bigger, right? Now, you need to uh, derive the mathematical equation. You see how much his uh, dimension increase along x-axis. Dimension increase only this mass. If I know this length, uh, this length C to C, this length, then we can figure out that how much uh, length increase in x-axis. Similarly, we figure out along y-axis, along z-axis. Then you will know the how much volume is increasing, total volume. Now you look, the velocity of point O 
along x axis is u that is right over here and this is u velocity of the fluid along y axis is v that will be over right over here but there is no changing dimension along y axis what does it mean that mean line o and point a they are traveling with same speed along y axis then point b and c traveling along y axis vertical direction with the same velocity but in x axis b and point o they have velocity u but c and a their velocity is different higher than point o and b so if point o velocity u what will be velocity at point a same thing you need to use the taylor series what is my ace ace is the del x so u plus del u by del x into del x this is the velocity along x axis of point a similarly velocity of point c along x axis now you see with delta t time how much distance is travel by line ob time delta t they travel this mass how can figure out this distance del u into del t right now how much distance travel by line ac line ac they travel from here to here so what is the blue color distance that will be this mass right from here to here so we can easily figure out because his velocity is this one if velocity is this one then this one you time by delta t you get total distance now how much this distance del x right so and how much this distance from here to here is del x so distance from here to here then subtract from here to here you will get the line a one second i have to erase all the line so line a prime this much distance i need to figure out equal to line o a prime o a prime minus line o a o a that we figure out okay o a prime minus o this a not the not the this one okay uh, i should differentiate with this thumb. say if i say a2 this one this will be a2 now what is this distance o a prime distance from here to here del x i can say this del x plus this term so that i, I did this is del x then plus this term then how much is to subtract minus this value in minus this value this one and this one then you simplify this term this term will be out and this u into delta t u will delta t out then you have on del u by del x del x into del t 
this much length increase right but i like to figure out the strain what is mean strain sense of uh, length how much uh, rate of uh, sense of length if i add rate then it's come with time but if i like to figure out the strain only linear strain you already learned in the solid mechanics deformation divided by original length that will be strain strain equal to delta by l right over here delta by l so how much length increase this much divided by original length along x axis was del x but this much length increase so this is the deformation divided by original length so you get this one del t now if you like to figure out strain rate strain rate mean there is a t okay is time is over can i continue or i should finish it here you have other class yes sir okay okay uh, so we are keeping off here okay and uh, we will discuss in the next class but any question so far no no sir